Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here to support Phil Haney. He is a great American. I'm not here on behalf of the campaign, but I'm here as Philip's former pro bono attorney. I found out about what Phil was going through, and particularly when he was trying to make an, an, a complaint to an inspector general under pretty precarious circumstances, and it was one of those opportunities in life where I just couldn't say no. So um, I, I just want to leave you with two points, and I'd be glad to ask answer any questions about kind of the inspector general angle that Phil endured. But uh, a couple points. I've actually... Um, I've actually written a book called The Inspector General Handbook. Um, when I was the DOD IG, there was no such book, and a lot of people would just scratch their head and said, what in the world is an Inspector General? So uh, I'm pretty familiar with what IGs do. I ran the largest, most expansive organization in the world for almost four years during two wars, and uh, it wasn't fun. I had to deal with a lot of uh, ugly stuff, a lot of uh, whistleblower reprisal, a lot of just bad behavior that had to be uh, illuminated and um, just to maintain good order and discipline within the Department of Defense. Um, Philip Haney personifies one of my favorite sayings um, that I learned over many years in the Inspector General business. And I try to teach not only my employees but my children this. And, and I think Philip will remember me telling him this when I first kind of heard his story. Um, number one, it's not easy being a whistleblower. Um, in fact, it's it, it's hard and uh, and and it's painful. Um, but I think Philip Haney personifies the old adage that anything is possible by the grace of God and a few Marines. You know. <laughs> Um, the one final point I just want to make, which um, I think is an important point to make, and, and as an inspector general, uh, I, I ran into this type of uh, political correctness in a very ugly way. Uh, I was actually asked by members of Congress to investigate uh, potential al-Qaeda infiltration into the American Chaplain Corps. And this was... Um, came to light when um, a chaplain by the name of Yi was caught down in uh, Guantanamo Bay and there were allegations that he was somehow complicit with the enemy and then they found a bunch of kiddie porn on his laptop and sort of the investigation went away and anyway members of Congress rightly came to me and said you know Mr. Schmitz we need you to take a look at the chaplain corps and make sure that um, we don't have enemies sneaking into our DOD infrastructure through the Chaplain Corps. And I did a, um, a pretty thorough review of the process of vetting chaplains. And I spoke with, uh, you know, the head Catholic chaplains, the head Protestant chaplains, the, the head Jewish chaplains. We didn't have very many um, Muslim chaplains at the time. There really wasn't a head, so I didn't have anyone to speak with. But I came up with a pretty common sense uh, test at the time and presented this test to the Under Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness who was in charge of supervising all of the ecclesiastical endorsing agents, including the Muslim ecclesiastical endorsing agents. To become a chaplain in the military, you have to essentially be presented and vouched for by your church or synagogue or mosque. And, um, and we had some pretty serious um, issues with one of the Muslim endorsing agencies, unbeknownst to me at the time, um, the founder of one of the Muslim uh, ecclesiastical endorsing agencies was none other than uh, Abdurman Alamudi, who Congressman um, Louis Gohmert mentioned was subsequently convicted and sentenced to 23 years in prison for being a bag man for a uh, hit job in the Middle East. And... Um, he was sentenced to 23 years, but I double-checked on my um, handy iPhone while uh, Congressman Gohmert was explaining the basic facts. But in 2011, the Obama administration successfully got his sentence reduced by six years. So by my count, he was, um, he was convicted, I think. His plea bargain, I think, was in 2004. 
plus 23 is 27, right? Minus 6 is 21, and probably for good time, he's probably ready to get out. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the current term, you're going to see some kind of a, a pardon. I wouldn't be surprised. But, yeah. So anyway, um, my hat's off, by the way. I didn't know Louis was back in. Um, there are very few. Did you hear what I said about the grace of God and a few Marines? Louis is one of the uh, very courageous uh, members of Congress that I would consider one of those Marines. Um, but anyway, the one final thing I'd just like to say um, with regard to this investigation or review that I did of all of the chaplain endorsing agencies in the Pentagon at the time, I, I had about uh, 15 or 20 recommendations on how to essentially screen better um, all of our chaplains. I mean, it wasn't just Chaplain Yee that was causing concern. There were even some Catholic priests that were doing bad things and Protestants and even Jewish. I mean, look, chaplains are humans. One thing you learn as an inspector general, <laughs> you know, uh, human nature doesn't change. And so um, I, one of my recommendations to the uh, kind of a conference room full of uh, personnel specialists was before we uh, accepted an endorsement of any chaplain, ecclesiastical endorsing agent, whether it's Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, Muslim, Wigan, whatever, uh, we ought to just do a quick national agency check just to make sure that you know the leaders or that organization itself wasn't about to be busted by the FBI. And this is no exaggeration. Some of the lawyers in the room, is it was as if the exorcist said the name Jesus Christ. Their heads started to spin. And a couple weeks later, I got a, quote, non-concurrence, is what they call it, from not from any one lawyer in the Pentagon, but from the impersonal office of the general counsel, non-concurring in my recommendation that we simply do a national agency check on the endorsing agency before we accept the endorsement for any chaplain. Um, I was so outraged, and by the way, I used to teach uh, First Amendment law, advanced constitutional law at Georgetown University before I became the IG as an adjunct professor, and I was virtually certain that my recommendation would pass muster under anybody's First Amendment test. It was absolutely neutral. It was designed for a very narrow purpose, but the general counsel's office of the Department of Defense, without anybody putting a personal name on it, non-concurred. And uh, as an inspector general, when you do these type of reviews, you just make your recommendations. You don't have any authority other than to shed light on facts and make recommendations. But a few years later, when Fort Hood happened and um, a Muslim chaplain assistant by the name of Nidal Hassan killed killed a number of American soldiers on an army base. Uh, when I found out that um, there was a chaplain uh, assistant who was the subject or was the, the killer, uh, all I could think of, and I won't use the adjective, but it began with an F and, the, and, and, it, and it modified the term lawyers. And that's all I could think about. And I, and I wrote a five-page letter to Chairman um, Diane Feinstein, uh, who was one of the members of Congress that asked me to do the chaplain uh, review, as I recall. And I just felt morally obligated to send this letter and say, you know, I got to tell you, I recommended a very simple test, and the lawyers re rejected it in the, in the Pentagon. And, and, and the, the moral of the story is political correctness kills. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna finish and, and I'll just come back to compliment Philip Haney. He's a he's a um, he's a very very courageous, very smart, and very uh, uh, dedicated man. I, I had the privilege of meeting his family, and um, you know at the end of all of our days, we all have to meet our maker and account for our talents. And I don't think Philip Haney, as painful as everything he's been through, I don't think he's going to have any problem accounting for his talents. Thank you very much.